Hello, I'm the Busy Bee Mom, and today I'm going to be showing you how to transfer patterns to a curved surface. Um, lately I've been doing some wood burning, as you can see by these two bowls. They're still in progress. And it's really easy to find images nowadays in, um, you know, clip art. You can get it from Dover, or you can just find free clip art online. But it always comes on a flat sheet of paper, and when you're trying to work on a curved surface, it can be hard to transfer the pattern. I'm going to show you the technique I use to do that. First, let's just go over some basic supplies. Wood board burning. I use a wood burning tool. This is just one I picked up at my local craft store. Um, my favorite tip, it came with a ton of tips, is this one. It comes with a really pointy tip, though, but I find it tends to snag on the wood grain, so I like this um, just fatter, rounder tip, and you can still get a pretty smooth line with this. So That's my favorite tip. It's pretty much the only one I use. So there's my wood burner. And then some other things to have handy is some tape, some whiteout, a marker, black works great, scissors, pencil, colored pencil also comes in handy, of course your pattern, and this is carbon paper. This is my favorite thing for transferring a pattern, it's just old fashioned carbon paper. I picked this up at a garage sale, I'm assuming you can still buy it at an office supply store, I don't know. Three sheets from now, I'll be shopping for it, so I'll have to post where I found it. Alright, so there's your basic supplies. Let me show you first how I did one of the ones on the bottom. Took my basic pattern that was flat, and I cut it all the way around. So I call this method fringing it. So you can see all the way around, I fringed it. And after you fringe it, then it will easily lay to the bottom of your bowl, and it curves. So, let's see. Of course, I would put a piece of um, the black carbon paper underneath this, and it would also be cut and fringed, just like this one. I thought I had one sitting here. Here it is. So this one, you can see the carbon paper has been fringed, and the pattern's been cut in. So don't cut, you know, in the middle there's no cuts. I just go around the outside and cut it. The more curve you have, the more cuts you have to make. And then you just stick it in there. And then you can take a pencil. Actually, the red one works pretty good because you can still kind of see your lines. And you just go around and go over it. Press kind of hard. And you don't want a really, really sharp pencil. You want it to be a little dull. This one's a little too sharp. And then you peel it off and you should be able to see your pattern. And then a lot of times I have to go back over it with a pencil because there would be some spots where it didn't transfer quite or I didn't push hard enough. So I'll go over it with my pencil. If you have to curve it a lot, there will be areas where your lines are kind of like jagged, where you don't have a nice smooth line. There will be have a little step. You just have to kind of smooth that. Oops. It will be jagged. You'll have a little step. And you just have to smooth that out. For this, it was such a slight curve to this. It, it, I didn't have to do anything at all. It transferred perfectly. Fine. So. There's for the bottom of the bowl, that's what I did. Now, for these, oh, I forgot to mention something. First thing I do, I pick up these bowls at a garage sale. One of the first things I do is I sand that finish off. You cannot wood burn it if it's got the varnish on it. And then I'll go back later and I'll put a wood, um, a food safe varnish over it all. But first thing I do is I take off the varnish where I'm going to wood burn. Because otherwise it stinks and it just you're just melting the varnish, not burning the wood. So okay. This is another way of doing it. This time I'm going on the inside curve, which means I have to curve my pattern a lot more. Here's one that I was working on yesterday. So you can see I fringed my carbon paper and I really skinny fringes because it has to curve a lot. And then I fringed my pattern and it's skinny fringes again because you have to curve it a lot. At some point your pattern doesn't meet up and that's where the white out and sharpie comes in handy because you just kind of draw a new pattern. So I've whited out spots where it was in, in, in. As long as it just sort of flows through, you know, this one comes in and goes around and back this way and this one comes up and out, you're good. It's not the pattern anywhere else, but when you quick glance at it, especially in the bowl, you're never going to notice that that's not like the rest of it, because it flows. 
This um, technique also comes in handy for embroidery. I'm going to show you an embroidery project I did using this technique. I found a pattern in a book. This one right here that I like. What, what book do I have? I have patterns for theatrical costumes. Probably have to now plug them or something. I don't know. And I had this pattern, and I wanted to do it on the neck edge of a gown. You can see how I've embroidered all around the neck edge of my dress. Well, flat pattern, curved dress. So that's what I did. I used the fringing method. What was neat about this is... Um, I took this curve and I transferred it just to a blank sheet of paper. So I had a big piece of paper with my curve on it, and then I cut and fringed this and taped it to that piece of paper, drew in the line. So I had to extend a lot of these lines a little bit. You can see how this, if you can see that, this oval is a lot fatter than this one. This is more of a circle, this is more of an oval. Well, that's because I had to extend a lot of the parts. And when you fringe it, you can be very careful to cut parts where you just have straight lines and then it's easier to fatten it. Anyway, um, I just uh, taped that to that sheet of paper and did all my fringing and um, changing of my pattern. And then I photocopied that and then transferred it to this. I tried using um, fabric transfer paper, but the carbon paper just still works so much better. The carbon paper does not wash out, so... If you have a mistake, you're in trouble. And you can kind of see still, it's dark underneath my stitches. That's where the carbon paper transfer is. But I don't mind. I think it kind of brings those stitches out a little bit better. Okay. Now I'm just going to go through and do one. So if you need a little more instruction, you can follow along as I actually do one of the bowls. I'm going to do one of these. I'm going to do... What am I going to do? I'm going to do this pattern to this bowl. So first thing we need is carbon paper. There goes my third sheet. I want to cut it wide enough so it's going to be cover up my pattern so it looks like about that big. Pencils. Way over here. So it needs to be about there. So I'm just going to cut a strip that, that is, is that big. All my scissors in my sewing room are really good. These are my crappy ones, so... These won't even cut fabric if you try. Alright, there's that. And then we have to fringe it. I want to get pretty close to that top edge, but not so close it's going to rip, so... Alright, once you have it all fringed, take your bowl, take your tape, try to use little pieces of tape. And you just work your way around that top edge, sticking it down. So, you just go around a piece of tape every so often. Okay, I've made it all the way back to the start. Let me just rip off a piece. It can overlap a little bit. There you go. And now you kind of want to push it down. My fringe is all tangled now. Push it down, flatten it out. Try to make sure you don't have any bowl showing through. Push it down so it follows the curve, and then you're going to put a little piece of tape down there too. 
to hold it in place. Because it wants to tent out and you want it to curve, match the curve of the side of the bowl. So push it down so it matches that curve. And a little piece of tape. Try not to push it too hard with the tape because, you know, the paper will transfer. Oh, and make sure you put it um, black side down. This stuff's pretty obvious. It's kind of gray on this side, really black on this side. The black side goes down. If you can't tell on yours, just go like this. And if it transfers, that's the right side. If it doesn't do anything, that's the wrong side. You see that? Okay, it's back in my bowl. Almost all the way around. So now I have lined my bowl with the carbon paper. I'm going to do the same thing with this. For this one, I'm going to cut a slit in it because I know it's going to have extra when I get around anyway. And I'm going to fringe this. Now, if I've discovered that since this is a curved pattern, I have to fringe the top edge too because it just doesn't want to lay flat. This is too much of a curve than the bowl. I actually think the top edge of my bowl is actually pretty flat. I probably should have used a flat design instead of a round one, but I'm making it work. We're going to go back along the top edge and in between my other slits we're just going to do another slit not as deep. Make sure you don't hit your other ones. Of course, if you do and it comes apart, just tape it back together. Okay, I've got it all fringed. A little bit on top, a little bit above. Do the exact same thing we just did for the carbon paper. Lay it in there, tape it down, just work your way around, pushing it flat to match the contour of the bowl. Okay, once you've gotten all the way around, here's where it gets tricky. You just have to try to play connect the dots. And this is where you're going to use some white out and your marker and just draw it so that the lines flow and continue. So, of course, I also want to tape the bottom, tape around the bottom like I did before. So, we're going to press it in, kind of make sure that it looks okay, tape it. Once you've kind of finagled it so the lines flow, I mean, obviously it doesn't look like the rest of it, but at least if you just glance at it, it looks pretty good. Now you can take your pencil, and I like to use, like to use a colored pencil because it shows up better, and trace your lines pushing fairly firmly so you can see your pattern. When you mark, you have to be careful because with all those um, cuts, you kind of just have to do little sections at a time. And because if I was just to go like this, they would snag. So you kind of pick a little section. And I like to just pick one line and go around. 
because eventually you'll come back on yourself. Oops. Okay, when you get all done, you've double checked and it looks like you've marked all your lines. Then you can take it off. Try not to destroy your pattern, you might still need it. Now it kind of looks like a hot mess. You can kind of see the pattern. Some areas look great, some areas not so good. Now you just take your pencil and you go over your lines and make sure that it's crystal clear. Like this area right here is kind of um, light, so I'm going to go over it with my pencil real quick and just darken it up a little bit. Oh, you know what? I need to sand right there. I didn't quite sand down far enough, so I need to come back and sand that. So anyway, just take your pencil and mark any areas that need cleaning up a little bit. I kind of went kind of crooked. Once you've got it marked so that you can clearly see everywhere you need to burn, you can go ahead and wood burn it. Now, in addition to doing just the black outlines, I'm probably going to do the background black also. Um, if you're going to do your lines black, you need to have these gaps. So this pattern already had these gaps, and you can see this one doesn't have those gaps. So if I was to do all these lines solid black, it would just look like a mess. This one is like this one in that we have just lines. So to make it pop, I did the background black. And I'll do the same on this one. It'll be like this. All right, that's what you do to transfer your pattern. It's kind of tedious, but the results turn out really good. And it really looks nice and professional when you can just have your pattern continually go around.